Hello everyone, my name is Elizabeth Elrod and this is my story. I am coming to you today from Athens, Ohio. Um, things were getting rough with mom, unfortunately, and I decided that the best thing to do was to get out and come back to Athens. Uh, it's so weird how things work because, I don't know, um, some of you may not believe in spiritual signs, but I personally believe that I had a spiritual sign to leave mom's house. Um, I don't know if that was because of the oncoming mental breakdown or I left um, last night and I got here to back to my house in Athens um, and I have been here for about an hour and a half or so, maybe a little bit longer, when I found out that there was a tornado coming my mom's way. And I, I had to call her at like midnight and tell her to, to hide in the closet. So, you know, I don't believe in a higher power such as like, I, I wouldn't per se call it the Christian God. But I do believe in a higher power. Um, I, 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 I kind of take the, the beliefs of um, the natives when they talk about the great spirit and how this, this spirit encompasses everything. So whatever was looking out for me last night was really looking out for me. And I'm grateful. But um, enough about that. Um, it's very early morning. I'm about to have online class in a couple of minutes. And I thought, hey, I think now would be a good time to film my video for the week. So I'm here with you, bedhead and everything. I've got my morning coffee. Uh, my mug says, I've got 99 problems and white heteronormativity patriarchy, heteronormative patriarchy is basically all of them. And... You can joke about how much of a liberal I am, but I'm I'm really not. I'm more of a progressive, and you can joke about that too. And you can joke about how I'm a Bernie bro, even though I'm a girl. But whatever, you know, I've been joked about with you know far more hurtful things from my own family. So I'll be fine. So today. Um, I wanted to talk about my father because he's been coming in my mind a lot. Um, and I, I just felt like I wanted to talk about him this morning. So, Dad, um, Dad was such a kind and gentle man. Dad grew up um, in the Portsmouth area. He he lived there most of his whole life. Um, he joined the Air Force when I believe he was in his 20s. And he dedicated, I believe, over 40 years of service. Not 40. No, that's a lie. About 20 years of service. It's early morning, give me a break. Um, he dedicated over 20 years of service to the Air Force. So, I wasn't a military brat, but I was a military brat, if that makes sense. Because Dad wasn't around a lot, um, because Dad was a member of the Air Force Reserves. Um, he was a senior master sergeant, um, which is, as I've come to believe, and as what people tell me, um, is a very high rank for someone in the Air Force. Um, so, a lot of the stuff he did, um, he didn't tell us about. And I just had to believe that he was off fighting bad guys, or, you know, whatever, whatever a kid believes, um, when their father isn't present in their life. Um, when Dad was home, he tried his best 
to spend time with me and my brother. Um, a lot of that time was doing yard work because I grew up, um, I grew up kind of on a farm. Um, it wasn't, we had animals for the, for a little bit, but not for the majority of my years growing up. It was mostly a garden, but we still, we still had to take care of the land because we had a, we had a field that would, would get really full of, of like really big sticks. And if we wanted to keep the, the weeds down, we would have to bush hog it. Um, and of course we would have to pick up sticks around the yard too. And it was a big yard. It would, it would be like an all day thing. Um, but dad, um, dad always seemed to love this kind of work. And I don't know if it was because he loved just being outside or if he loved being with me and my brother. Um, as someone who was raised as a boy, you know, I think dad, dad wanted to, you know, raise me and my brother to be kind of manly guys. Um. And that obviously didn't really work on me, but, um, it was a thing. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, he used to tell us that we needed to be brave and that we needed to grow up big and strong, um, to take care of the farm, but you know, now there's no garden, there's no animals, it's just land and... It, Mom can barely take care of it herself. It's hard. But, um... Going back to Dad. He was like Mom, where he tried to give us experiences that we didn't have. Um, Dad was actually probably one of my biggest supporters when it came to music school. He, he loved music so much. We, um, when dad was diagnosed with cancer, we would listen to music, um, on the way to his cancer appointments, his radiation appointments up in Columbus. Um, it would be about a two hour drive from Portsmouth, well, our house which isn't technically in Portsmouth, but Portsmouth to Columbus. Um, and we would just jam out to classic rock. We would share each other's music. And even though Dad wasn't the best proponent of me being queer, that was one thing that we could really, really click on, you know, was our music. My senior year of high school, um, I played Valjean in uh, our high school's production of Les Miserables, and I got Dad to love that music. Apparently, he used to listen. <laughs> if anyone knows the music of Les Mis, they know that the end of the first act ends with the the rousing musical number that is One Day More, where all the cast finally comes together for this big, big grand finale of the first act. And Dad, um, Dad would listen to it when he was getting his radiation treatments. In a way, I think the... The listening of One Day More helped him think, oh, if I can just do this for one more day, I can be present in the lives of my children. Um, my freshman year after, after college, um, that summer was when a lot of that radiation treatment happened, and I was gone a lot. I went to the United Kingdom on a study abroad trip for two weeks. Um, my choir had the 
the honor of singing back up to the Rolling Stones. As I'm saying it, it sounds like some elaborate fever dream as I watched Mick Jagger change into his red coat um, backstage uh, at the Horseshoe in Columbus. But Dad, even though he really wanted to be there for that concert and just be there for a lot of it, he couldn't. He couldn't come to the opera I was in my freshman year. Um, he came to one choral concert, and that was when my choir went on tour, and we actually came through Portsmouth that year. So, Dad and I had a very deep connection with music. He, he really, really wanted me to be successful. I was studying to be a music, um, music teacher. I wanted to be a choir director for a hot minute. Years down the road, I think I still would. Um, but as of right now, I'm studying to be a music therapist because I want to help recovering addicts, um, in Appalachia, but dad just, he never stopped supporting my artistic talent. He loved when I played piano. Oh my God. If he, if he were alive today and he knew that I was playing guitar, I know he would be hounding me to learn some songs. Um, one of the last albums we listened to before he died was um, The Eagles Live on vinyl. And now I can't listen to The Eagles without crying and thinking about them. Um, I don't know why I, um, I believe a lot of Native American beliefs. I'm not Native American, but the revering, the reverence of, um, the earth and nature has always been something that has spoken true to my deepest core. And for those of you who may know me well, they know that I love crows and ravens. Um, for those of you who don't know, the Native Americans um, believed that crows and ravens were messengers of the afterlife. And in my toughest moments... I would see them and immediately think of Dad at his funeral. My um, high school choir came and we sang um, a setting of the poem, Do not stand at my grave and weep. I am not there. I do not sleep. Um, if, if you don't know it, please look it up. But if you want to listen to the arrangement, it's by Eleanor Daly and... The name of the arrangement is actually called In Remembrance, but that's that that piece is about don't go to my grave and cry because I'm not really there. I live with you in nature. I am the gentle breeze that blows. I am the sunlight on snow. I am the circling bird. And I've always believed that when a crow comes to visit me, it's dad. He visited me um, when I came to mom's house. And when I woke up this morning and went outside, I heard another crow. And you know, I think about him all the time. I have a, I actually have a crow tattooed on my back. Um, just to let me know, just to not let me know, but, you know, remind me that even in death, dad always has my back. Sorry to get all sappy on y'all this morning. 
he was just on my mind, and I felt like I needed to talk about him. This time is really hard right now. Um, people's loved ones are very sick. And some of them may not make it through this alive with COVID-19. So tell them that you love them while they're still here. I was luckily able to do that with my dad before he passed. And, um, uh, he knew, he knew that I loved him. And I knew that he felt bad for all that he had done when he found out I was queer, ignoring me and just not supporting me, um, when it came to my identity. But I don't hold that against him. He was doing what he thought was best. And, you know, it's, if, if I hold him against it, if I hold it against him in death, you know, I'm not going to get closure. You know, it's not like I can go to him and talk to him about it. I mean, I can. <laughs> and I have. And I've, you know, I've received inner peace about it. I miss him, but, and we all miss him, everyone who knew him. I think he knows that I'm happier now, since I've transitioned. This morning, my heart goes out to any of you who have ever lost a parent, especially at a young age. I lost my dad when I was 19. The the shock that comes from losing a parent or it doesn't even have to be from death I mean I, I know people whose parents have disowned them I know people whose parents treat them horribly and that's just as bad because you grieve over not having someone you loved who or not having someone who should have loved you and supported you in all of your endeavors. We should have supported you for who you are. Um, I just want to end my talk this morning. Reminding all of you that. You're not alone. Um, you're, you're not going through these things alone. That I'm here. And if you still want to talk to me. I'm more than willing to. Just shoot me a message here on Facebook. On um, Facebook. YouTube. Find me on Facebook. Elizabeth Rose Alrod. But either way. I'll probably respond to a YouTube message quicker. I don't always. Um, I receive a lot of messages from strangers on Facebook. A lot of, um, a lot of men writing me love sonnets. <laughs> so, a lot of women, too. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm rambling at this point, but I want you all to have a great day. Remember that you're not alone, and I'm sure that there's someone out there looking out for each and every one of you, just like I feel like my dad has my back. So, have a great day. Enjoy your coffee. And I'll see you all next week. Take care.